had this discussion for the last 15 years. It this, this comes up every year. I think Sammy's slide sums up the telco experience. I've been, um, for the last five years, the market cap for the top fangs were up 737%. The market cap for the top five telcos globally has been down 34 cents. So that is summarizes the session today. How can telcos monetize non-connectivity services better? I think if you speak to telcos globally for the last decade, I think one of the big things they talk about, I think Sammy hit it on the nail as well, is that legacy systems, the cultural heritage, the legacy cultural heritage, it hangs on them. And as a result, there's huge amount of investment, huge amount of capex, huge amount of capex commitment that needs still today to maintain that legacy infrastructure. And that's one of the big reasons as to why telcos find it very hard to move into newer areas with smaller, with shrinking margins as well. And I think that cultural change, that cultural transformation, I think Sammy said DBS took eight years. I'm not quite sure if telcos have another eight years to transform themselves. That's a big question. I think that cultural transformation is probably the biggest hurdle as to how they can make telco salespeople more adapted, more agile to meet that digital transformation and to sell digital solutions as well. So the big question I'm going to ask to start off this session is that how can telcos adjust to become more agile, more digitally savvy to adjust to this new world order? I think a good place to start will be Willis. That's you. M1, new parent company who has transformed themselves in some ways to be more like a renewable organization as well. So maybe you can start kick things off. What have you learned in the last decade and how do you think telcos can transform themselves going forward as well? So let me just uh, start off by saying that I'm from Keppel. Uh, oh, Keppel, sorry. Yes, Keppel. M1. M1, yes. Uh, M1 is part of Keppel nowadays. So I think just to introduce, for those in Singapore, you know us very well. Keppel is a big organization. We have four business, connectivity, which I'm from, urbanization, uh, urban development, and also the energy piece, and also the asset management. So I think for me, actually, I came from a startup company, and, and I was acquired 10 years ago. And I've seen through the transformation of a telco from rich to middle income to poor. <laughs> so you have seen, uh, uh, Sammy giving that example. What has changed for us actually is uh, the what traditionally was bits and data for us in terms of revenue, secured revenue and on, on a monthly and yearly basis has now changed into one that is of um, solution based. All right. So for the uh, for the in, for the B two B two B two C industry, today consumers are no longer demanding gigabytes, minutes, SMS. I mean, most of you here know it's almost worthless. Lo very little ARPU for us. And um, for M1, I think what we are seeing for the B2C industry is that and now today the telco has to transform into what you call a digital platform player, all right? Creating hyper-personalized solutions, right? Whether it's Netflix and partnering ecosystem partners to deliver these solutions to every single consumer, all right? On the B2B side, it's even more challenging. What used to be, you know, um, what you call deliverables has now become outcome as a service. Customers are no longer coming to us for a solution, uh, ICT equipment. Etc. What we are facing today is customer are coming to us for an outcome. So in, in M1 today, I have actually changed the entire compensation scheme. You are no longer measured by how much sales you have, but outcomes by customers. All right. So I think we know that Capital has four verticals that we are in. We are very lucky. So part of the transformation we had was to leverage on our parents' company's um, core competency. You will see us playing in the area of urbanizations, in the areas of energy, in the areas of um, connectivity, data centers, etc. We have the whole range of it. So what we need the telco need to transform is not just mindset change. That's easy to say, all right? But you really need to relook your entire business and see what do you want to be in the future? And that defining mission statement must be there for every single telco now to go forward. Because as, as Samuel has shown you in the earliest, I really love your stacks earlier. <laughs> the time is running out for us. Exactly the words I use, you know. Uh, of course, I mean, they use the Nokia you know, burning platform. We are not at that stage yet, but I can tell you time is running up for us and we need to find a new business model. So every telco have a different solution. Today, our competitors are no longer fellow telcos, but it could be new players in the market and we hope to find new solution as part of the transformation. Maybe hope that answers your question. Okay, so the defining moment is, be is at now, basically. That's what you're, you're looking for that defining moment. So it's the best time to go to Google, Avinef, sorry if I pronounce your name. I mean, if you look at, if you compare yourselves, where you are, the kind of culture you have at Google, and maybe just look across next to you, um, Capo. I mean, how do you make that comparison? He said they have more or less transformed themselves. They have looked into new solutions. They're redefining themselves. I mean, what, at, based on your experience at Google, what advice can you give to your fellow telco, one, this one and a half there, um, of how, what they can, they can learn from you, basically? Sure. Thanks, Adrian. And hello, everyone, fellow panelists. 
very quick intro. I lead the transformation practice for APAC at Google, and in the past I was with Singtel. So I've been with Telco and you know, have been fortunate that for 15 years been working with telcos globally and trying to help them digitally transform, which I think, you know, is what we are discussing. It hasn't happened <laughs> yet. <laughs> so that's a good point. Uh, I think, you know, Sami made a very good kind of point when he, during his presentation about culture, that a lot of telcos have to think about, you know, how they are changing themselves in terms of, you know, the culture and the people that they bring in and how you're bringing products and services to market. And it's a very rigid framework in the telco industry, thanks to the regulatory overhead, PM forum standardization, and some amount of standardization is important to offer a very highly redundant service that telco is. But one has to think about you know, telco in a different context. That's not the way the industry was kind of designed. Uh, if any other industry has to create new factories every three years, uh, it will be very different. You know, the, and that's where the telco industry is. The pace of technology evolution has been so fast in the past few years that from 3G to 3.5G to 4G and 5G, and we are already talking about 6G now. So every three years, you have to set up new factories for producing the products and you know, often the same products. So it's a very different you know, ball game. Therefore, you need to have differentiation in the front end, and that means you, know, you need to kind of you know, innovate much faster. And just a comparison point there, um, Adrian, in terms of culture, how culture drives uh, you know, revenues and growth. Uh, when we look at the top five companies, and I looked at their data for 20 to 21, revenues of top five technology companies, and these are three with names A, Amazon, Alphabet, which is Google, uh, and uh, you know the other two, which is Meta and Microsoft, $1.4 trillion was revenues. Mm -hmm. And I'm ta talking about market cap revenues. When we look at the telco industry globally, the revenues are $1.5 trillion, you know, slightly higher than that. Now, more interesting fact is the growth between the two. The growth is 27% for digital companies or technology companies versus 1.7% for telcos. Now, that talks about the culture of innovation that these companies bring in. And at a very high wear base as well, just the top five companies are producing much faster. And you know, this is the same industry that the telco is part of, the same digital continuum. So when we think about you know, the cloud connectivity and security, how can you innovate faster and you know, create that service level differentiation is very important. And particularly at Google, I think it's at the heart of what Google does. It does you know, create similar standardized products that we see, which is used by billions of users. There are nine products which has more than billion users that Google has. And all of them have a different experience for you when you go in. So when you log in, you see a YouTube, which has a very different experience for you, which is designed for you and based on what you see the way you like it. And I think that comes from kind of diversity, equity and inclusion that Google looks at, and most importantly, the people and culture that it brings in terms of you know, allowing to failing fast, you know, looking at areas which are growing faster and you know, creating a data-driven culture, most importantly. Mm. And I think I'll, I'll pause there yeah. uh, and let others kind of you know, chime in. Yeah, can I, can ahead, I comment Sammy, on yeah. that? So th th thanks, uh, I, mean, I think it's interesting. I, I think the interesting question we should ask ourselves is that what would Facebook do if they had the telco capabilities? If they had Spectrum, they had the regulatory information, oh sorry, the relationship, and they would have the data. What would they do? How, how, how would that world look like? I bet it looks different than the, the uh, Docomo or, or Singtel or, or M1. Oh, that's a good question. So I don't have a perfect answer to that. Maybe I could pass it on to Rajesh. In terms of service creation, I mean, if, Back to his earlier point about um, moving fast, failing fast. I've always remembered this quote that someone mentioned to me. Speed is better than perfection because the industry moves on so quickly. It's better to launch a service before you get everything perfected as well. And also there are so many um, alternative providers in the market or new age provider, digital providers like a Google. And what happens if they are uh, armed with the same capabilities as a telco? I know the two of you uh, work in the periphery. You en help telcos enable new services and help fix their back end as well. Some thoughts on that in terms of service creation and what could you do and help telcos along with it? Uh, thank you, Adrian. And yep. uh, just as a quick intro, uh, I'm from Maria Systems. I look after the business for APAC here locally. Hi. It is, it is. Okay, okay. Um, and uh, what RE Systems does is try to, um, I, I, I don't want to call it the pain, but essentially reduce the pain on that cost to serve curve, right? I mean, because of 5G or 4G, the whole um, cost to serve is constantly going up versus the ARPU. 
and where we come in is trying to minimize that cost to serve by uh, being a, a technology service provider that sits in the cloud. Um, unlike the traditional systems where you have to install um, platforms, I mean, very similar to the likes of Google and Facebook. So you don't have to worry about, um, you know, your technology stack, how, how quickly do you scale and so on. So um, when you want to launch a service, um, we want to launch it within days or, you know, it would soon be ours rather than having to launch it um, in, you know, in yes. months and 18 months like you previously mentioned right it's it need, it need not be 18 months you you know by 18 months that that opportunity would be gone so we want to be um, that provider that supports and enables that um, transition um, and 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 we come from the monetization end of it which is a very important aspect uh, boring but important i would say because that's uh, you know as long as your billing is working nobody cares right the money keeps coming in and we want to keep it boring. We want to automate it, and we want we don't want any hands on it. So that's where that's that's sort of various principles um, towards this. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, Filippo, I got your name right. Thoughts on that as well. Thanks, Adrian. Um, yeah. So first of all, uh, also a quick intro uh, from my side. Um, I work for Entity Docomo, and in particular, uh, I'm the vice president for uh, Asia Pacific for Docomo Digital that is the payments division of Entity Docomo. So our job is to go to market globally with pretty much all telcos um, for payments projects. Uh, that means uh, uh, content bundles, carrier billing, uh, but because of the particular um, area that, uh, that we cover, we also work a lot with OTT companies, uh, SVODs and um, you know, gaming providers. So a lot of content providers. Um, so we have a bit of a privileged vantage point in the content industry to understand where the market is going, also in terms of monetization of uh, new opportunities. So in terms of agility, and Sami, thanks for, for um, providing the background so clearly in your previous pre presentation, it saves us a lot of work, <laughs> I think. <laughs> In you know in make in clarifying that, but I think so. I so we work a little bit higher up in the stack. So I'm gonna make a comment more on the application level. But uh, when it comes to strategy and clearly reducing time to market is imperative. That there's no um, there's no doubt about it. I think um, um, I would like to uh, to start with one data point. There is a piece of research that Analysis Mason has recently presented and that um, forecasts a 25% of cost reduction uh, for telcos in the next five years that comes from uh, uh, software as a service, so uh, uh, launching application with software as a service. Now, on top, so this of course reduces time to market for obvious reasons because you don't have to build it bottom up, um, you know, since the beginning and internally. But also it gives that agility to uh, try and fail fast. And finally, with the cost saving, it builds into the valuation and it addresses also the other um, point that, uh, that we know. Um, we already know from McKinsey that uh, in the last uh, two to three years, from 2019 to 2021, the percentage of OPEX that telcos are dedicating to software as a service uh, went more than doubled from five to 11%. Um, which is another, I think, very important data point uh, that uh, leads into, um, into this discussion. So obviously, as a part of the strategy, maybe not all telcos will be ready to have everything outsourced, that's clear. But I think in, in a healthy uh, portfolio of services and activities, uh, considering software as a service uh, providers could be you know, a good, a good uh, way forward for many uh, telcos. Okay, so he brought a very interest, few interesting points, but the one thing that strikes me is that applications. So digital services will be applications driven. We can't run away from it. And I think for most telcos, when, you think of, when they think of applications, they shy away from it. And for an enterprise buyer especially, if they need something fixed when, it, when it's applications oriented, they very rarely go to a telco. I think this is one area they struggle with. And here at, um, here at Asia Tech, we, we talk about the future technologies that will dominate the digital world, whether it's blockchain, whether it's IoT, whether it's AI, whether it's machine learning, they're all applications driven. And if telcos want to su be successful, they need to pick up those applications. So the next question basically among all the many technologies that's been rolled out in the next five, 10 years, I mean, telcos, it would be very hard for telcos to be master of everything. That's the unvarnished truth. What would be the easiest 
path to success, basically, if there's, you know, if there's such a path, or do they need to go spread themselves wide? Maybe a good place to start would be, um, sorry, Willis from Capel. M1 and Capel. M1, sorry, yeah. <laughs> so I think um, if you ask me, if we become another software player, there are one million other players who will compete with us. So I think as a telco, what we need to do is to look at our strengths and see where we can compete effectively in the market. If you ask me, there's only one area, 5G. This has to be that, I'm not sure Holy Grail is the right word to use, something that we want to bring to market on the consumer end, on the enterprise end, that give us an edge, whether it's the solutions we are building, the software we are building, that encompass 5G. But 5G on its own will never be enough. Right? I think 5G, you have seen, I went to Barcelona five times every year, the answer is the same. So what you need with 5G today is actually to bundle it or to, to integrate it with key emerging technologies, AR, VR, right? Then you create immersive solutions. You want to, immerse, you want to combine it with AI, use 5G to create more, a, a next generation call center, all right? That can be anywhere. It doesn't have to be in Singapore anywhere. So things like this, I think these are at least for us, 5G is key. And then um, AR, AR, VR, AI. And another piece that we will probably look at very closely is along the horizontal edge, do we have an advantage as a telco? One of the areas, of course, is data. We have lots of data, right? I mean, today we can't sell the data, unlike Facebook and Google, you know, you can <laughs> do advertising. We can't because we are regulated, all right? So is there a smarter way to use the data to combine with the 5G technology to deliver new immersive experience, both in the enterprise space and not just in, for B2B or B2C? It could even be B2B2C. We could partner a, a new uh, a company in the level, anybody in the market, and then bring new digital solutions to them to the market using 5G as a core. I think that's the way for at least everyone to look at this um, transformation and to bring advantage to it. Okay, so it's a good time to pass over to Sammy. So NCS has a IT engineering heritage applications has always been part of your portfolio or capabilities. I think one of the areas whereby you might have struggled in the past is to build that ecosystem of ISV, something like an AWS basically. So I think to me, I think applications is absolutely pivotal to be successful in anything digital basically. Maybe thoughts on that, thoughts on NCS going forward about building a maybe an ISV ecosystem and what do you think about, you know, where do you think the easiest path to glory is for NCS outside 5G? Because I think there's a big story on 5G. I just feel 5G is prematurely born at this point of time. But beyond 5G, where else do you see opportunities for NCS? So uh, I'm, I'm talking from the kind of Telco Plus lens because yeah. NCS is larger than uh, uh, Telco Plus uh, overall. Just to kind of uh, about the kind of technology trends, first of all, I think the the kind of regardless whether you're NCS or operator, the, the, the kind of what uh, Willis say, uh, mentioned about the partnering. So this is becoming an ecosystem play, regardless whether you're telco, whether whether you're uh, telco plus or whoever you are. And and so we need to kind of a partner with the uh, kind of technology specialists and application companies, product companies much more uh, kind of a deeply. So where, where kind of uh, our kind of uh, holy grail uh, is, is kind of uh, working together uh, with, with our owners, which is the group, to create the kind of next generation architecture for the telcos. So that's where we're looking at uh, very much monetizing. When it comes to the technologies, you can't avoid AI. It's, it's all over. So the, 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 because we are developing services uh, for our parents and, and for our associates. And one of the things is, for example, context sensitive network. So that when you're at home, the, the, there is an, an intelligence to understand whether you're watching TV, are you playing a, a mobile game, are you browsing, uh, are you Googling uh, something, or what are you doing? And, and the bandwidth is kind of adjusted accordingly on the context what you are doing. And, and, and whether it's your fridge that is wants to get more milk to be delivered. There is a different kind of a context. So that, that the AI kind of a, is going to be everywhere. But then this kind of a trust thing, so there becomes a trust thing. So blockchain comes with the trust as well. So it, it is, I don't know whether we are, it's a fortunately or unfortunately really the de facto uh, kind of technology to, to kind of implement trust-based solutions uh, that uh, are relatively kind of non-hackable. Uh, you can hack even even the uh, blockchain. But that's that's how we are looking at. So we are looking at this we're very much a, a, about the partnering, uh, uh, partnering with the network equipment providers. So Ericsson's, Huawei's of the world. We are also looking at the the kind of startups in blockchain with with these kind of uh, these trust solutions. 
uh, we ourselves are working with the AI because it's 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 the kind of a next next kind of a big thing. Everything needs to be uh, AI, and then working with our, our parents as as well. So because then because whatever we do with our parents, we get to co-own the IP. So that's the the beauty of being owned by uh, an, an, an industry. Okay, good, um, Rajesh. So I believe you work with telcos more on from a consumer perspective, largely. So what are your thoughts of in terms of generating the next generation of killer consumer applications? I mean, we've been through content. Telcos have never been successful even in, as a content aggregator, yet alone a creator. So what else, what's next for them, basically, um, it's if a, anything? Yeah, it's a, it's, an, it's, an, it's a very interesting question. I was keenly um, listening to the previous speakers over here, and I think Kevin and um, uh, I think Dr. Tan, uh, also nailed it on. It's it's a big puzzle, and I don't I don't think it's been solved. Right? What is the next killer app? You also said that streaming was a killer app when 4G came around. Um, I think it's a big puzzle for the telcos to solve. Uh, they're trying everything. I mean, if I look around me, um, I'm, I'm in Australia. It's it's quite interesting. There's Optus Subhub. They're trying to uh, aggregate. Uh, <laughs> uh, they're trying to aggregate and uh, take a small small clip of the uh, of Netflix's margin. Um, uh, Telstra is launching Telstra Energy. Um, it, it, these are all interesting avenues we see around us, but I guess, uh, again, I'm being controversial here, but my personal viewpoint is um, everyone writes on this data pipe that is owned by the telcos. And the moment someone realizes that, you know, someone needs to pay a premium to actually access a good quality of service is when the things are going to change. And uh, maybe someone will solve that puzzle soon, I, I guess. <laughs> That's a good point. I mean, because some um, in some countries, um, the telcos are trying to make the new age players pay for the um, networks. As well. I think Korea started it, and I think in Europe, where regulation is rampant, I think they're trying to make the telcos pay for, um, try to get the new age players pay for the for the usage of the networks as well. So, Filippo, thoughts on that as well? I mean, according, listening to Rajesh was saying, there's really no next killer app from a consumer perspective. Do you agree with that as well? I do. Yes. Okay. So um, Done deal. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so if we have to look at um, what successful telcos or relatively successful telcos are doing globally, um, and let's define success. So we, we can define a measure of success in creating what we call beyond core revenues, right? So those telcos, that, who are those telcos that have been able to diversify their revenue mix a little bit more in the last few years and what they have done to achieve that. So there are a few examples. And um, I think to make a parallel with what successful scale-ups or large scale-ups or you know, unicorns have done, so there are certain archetypes that have been common between the, the two if we want to make the parallel aptly between the you know, telco and tech sector. So one, um, uh, so one uh, clear uh, archetype is the ecosystem uh, creation. You also referred to that some earlier. So telcos, they have, they have created uh, strong ecosystems uh, by posing themselves at the center of these ecosystems as a technology enabler um, and either built companies, bought companies, or partnered with companies. Um, in the service providing uh, space. So in that way, uh, a lot of value was brought, I'm gonna make examples, uh, a, a lot of value was brought in, um, uh, because both parties have been able to leverage on their core strengths, so in doing what they know best. Um, so service providers in, in that case, uh, you know, have that very uh, focused customer experience and engagement that is typical of digital services, whereas telcos uh, take the role of um, leading uh, tech enablers. So this is, for example, the case of Turkcell in Turkey. They've created a very strong ecosystem, especially with the consumer financial services. They have a subsidiary called Paycell that is generating a few hundred millions uh, US dollar equivalent in revenues from financial services, but of course it, it's strongly baked on, 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 the, on the Turkcell um, network and, 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 and business. Um, other examples maybe um, uh, come from the region. I mean, uh, Entity Docomo, our mother company. So we created D Plus long before Plus was a cool uh, addition to every brand. Right? So Docomo Plus or D Plus was the, <laughs> no, and it was a completely another thing. 
<laughs> yeah, actually, so D plus was a strategy that perhaps 10 years ago <laughs> we announced it to, uh, to enable ecosystem partnerships. So it wasn't about video streaming at all, actually, because 10 years ago there was no video streaming virtually. Um, but it was about uh, telco being at the center of the ecosystem and enabling um, a lot of uh, apps in, in healthcare, in, in with the promo case, uh, in financial services, in loyalty programs, and, and so on and so forth. So um, there are uh, cases of success, I think, in terms of the killer app, probably there isn't a single one, but I think we are starting to see those strategies uh, that are emerging as successful. So I think that's a good point to start. So bottom line ecosystem is very important. I think he brought up a very good point about financial services. So in some parts of the world, especially in Africa, players like Safaricom, MTN, something like 20, 25% of their revenue comes from mobile wallet. They were like the trailblazers in mobile money and so on. And I think Orange is another organization. There's Orange Bank and here in Singapore, Singtel and Grab are launching virtual banks here in Singapore as well as Malaysia. So that seems to be one area whereby there has been some kind of success globally as well. So the, back to you, Google. So Google, everyone wants to partner with Google, whether from a consumer or from an enterprise standpoint, and um, you're always much sought after. So what, what advice would you give to these to telcos generally as to where should they focus on? And, and we are working with a lot of uh, telcos in the region and globally as well. When we think about and you know, each of them, I would say, have at least one problem statement, which is common, which is how do we drive growth and you know, which is what the panel is about. And I think a lot of telcos need to start thinking as uh, investment portfolio managers. And I think it's true for any other company. Um, one, of course, you know, that's regulatory protection that allows and gives some headroom for, you know, for a certain period of time. But at the same time, we know the core is declining and there is diminishing, uh, you know, returns there. Uh, and one one of the areas which you know a lot of these digital companies are very good at is you know that managing their business as an investment portfolio. So they invest in you know some bets which fail, which we all know many of these could be expensive mistakes. There are others which actually outshine and deliver you know very strong results, and that's true for most of the digital companies, software companies. And if you see over the past decade or so, it has accelerated a lot more. However, when we look at the telco side, it is not short of kind of initiatives. You know, all of them have tried. There have been like tens or twenties of even in many cases like a, you know, a media acquisition in the in the U.S. by AT and T, eighty billion dollar or something, and then a write down in next three years of forty billion dollars or so. So there is value erosion, and it's very common if you see globally that uh, all of many of these you know, initiatives, about ninety percent of them have failed or haven't kind of you know given the returns so what is going wrong there is is an important question to ask and definitely one is that you know is it the next killer app and i'm sorry i have a slight difference of opinion there uh, that uh, everybody may be looking for the next killer app or it's like a me too uh, you know syndrome going on there that oh everybody has to be a content aggregator or you know be the, you know the financial services and there are examples of these, you know, in some markets it has worked, others where it hasn't. So which means, you know, you know, the answer is that it will, you know, there is no kind of one size fits all solution. So every telco needs to think differently. And definitely there's a lot of growth in the digital ecosystem. And the closer you are to the core, and if we see, you know, particularly for telcos, uh, you know, Willis mentioned about augmented and virtual reality, edge cloud is another area, AI and, you know, how... Telcos can help in organizations in that journey and because of the disintermediation that has happened with cloud particularly, uh, there has been some you know, dollar erosion there, but you know, there's a chance to hit back with you know, edge cloud and particularly even on the data side when we think about privacy and data sovereignty concerns, that's a very important area where value can be created by telcos given the relationship that they have. But the most important factor I feel is getting the operating model right, which is you know, when you think about a portfolio, how do you not create or just invest in another company, but imbibe that as a digital you know, way of life and creating new products and services, and particularly service differentiation in the front end. Excellent. I'm going to throw this up to the floor. If you have any questions for the panelists, just raise your hand quickly before I move on. Okay, so before I move on, I think I have one final question because I have 10 minutes and you have five people in the panelists. So, I don't think the telco industry is the only industry that has been disrupted. I mean, if you look at other industries, whether it's um, 
um, Airbnb, which is basically hospitality. They've been disrupted by the emergence of Airbnb. Logistics has been disrupted by Uber. I think media has been disrupted by all the streamers, basically. But most of them have managed to disrupt, um, reinvent themselves, even, uh, even low-cost carriers that came into the marketplace. So almost all, um, uh, all airlines have a low-cost um, offering these days. So people can go through disruption and reinvent themselves and reborn themselves and become, you know, emerge as much stronger. And even for the, for the banking industry, they're fighting against the fintechs as well. They become more lightweight today, like a DBS bank. It took them eight years, but today DBS is the largest uh, organization in SGX in terms of market capitalization. So if you look at all these examples from the other industries, so the question is for all the panelists, what can you, what can telcos, not you obviously, because not all of you are from the telco industry, what can telcos learn from that? That's number one. And how do you think telcos, what would a telco look like in five years' time? Would that will be the main thing? So I will pass it on to um, Willis. I think the first thing you need to be is to think like a startup, like any other digital company, and that keyword is agility. Right? I think that's the, to me, that's the most important thing. Agility and um, what what I, what what the telco can do now going forward is that beyond being agile, you have got to have a startup mindset. Look at all these guys that are disrupting companies; they started with nothing, right? And um, the cost of capital is going up as interest rate rises. Mm -hmm. So I think in a way, it it will it will balance the skill a little bit for a telco when we go to market today, all right? And then the the cost of capital is increasing, which is good. I think it's good for the health health healthy for the telcos, and we but we cannot just rely on cost of capital, our large customer database, our traditional way of doing things to, to be able to compete and um, to digitize. So I think that, that entrepreneurship in the telco industry is critical now beyond agility. Two things, agility and, and entrepreneurship mindset for every single initiative you are building. Thanks. And how would M1 look in five years' time? I think in five years' time, I don't think today you don't see us as a connectivity provider anymore. I think Sammy has said Telco Plus. Uh, I guess I, I'm not sure what's one of this, but I think you will be looking at. I mentioned earlier two things: B two B, you're looking as a as a hyper personalized platform, right? Someone that delivers an outcome to you. In the B two B space, similarly, you you will see us uh, to be a hybrid between a consulting firm and a and a and a, and a traditional telco. And so I'm not sure what the end result will be. Nobody knows. So I think we are still transforming, and we are we need to see where the best paths lead, lead us. But in our mind, we are very clear. If we have to change now, we have to be agile. We have to get entrepreneur mindset, just like Google when it first started out, just like Apple. All right. If you ask me, what's the what is the um, uh, killer app? I think Steve Jobs is the killer app. Before before Steve Jobs came about, we were doing a lot of video ads anyway, but nothing took off until Steve Jobs came about. So I guess we got to learn from Steve Jobs a little bit because that entrepreneur mindset, that startup, the new iPad, the new things that you build, has to be that. I can't, I can't be. I can't. I mean, we can't be Steve Jobs. Any of us here, or all of us can be Steve Jobs. But if every of us put in a little bit of effort to be that little Steve Jobs. Then magic will happen for the telco industry. Thank you. Entrepreneurial, that's the key word. So, Filippo, entrepreneurial, what else do telcos need to learn from their peers in other industries and what would they look like in five years? It's a very, uh, it's a very difficult question to answer, but um, clearly keep insisting on the strategy of diversifying the revenues. And, uh, and uh, yeah, I, I don't, personally, I don't think there's... Um, as, uh, as I mean, as you were also mentioning, I don't think there's a recipe that anybody has found now. So it's more like keep experimenting, uh, being entrepreneurial, fail fast, um, you know, experiment fast, fail, fail fast, hopefully some sometimes succeed also. Um, and, you know, keep launching, uh, creating a portfolio of services that shifts um, towards value creation for end users and therefore, you know, bringing um, the business to a higher margin um, part of the value chain. Okay, fair enough. Um, I've got to change the question a little bit for Sammy. So Singtel has been on this transformational journey for quite some time. Followed Singtel when Bill Chang was, came in and all, and that was like in 2010. I mean, to be honest, success for Singtel has been moderate. I mean, it's not the best example to give, but you have found success in certain areas beyond connectivity. So maybe for the question for you, what has Singtel done in the past that they could have changed and become, and why do you see Singtel in five years' time, basically? So the first part of your question that what was done? That or, you could have done better and oh, would, would do, would oh, do okay. differently uh, well, in the How next much part. time do we have? <laughs> Six, well, no, two no, minutes each. <laughs> no, no, just joking, joking, joking. So uh, uh, it, it's, it's definitely uh, this kind of culture thing. So we, 
where I think they're, they're kind of uh, adopting this digital company culture uh, would make a big difference. Uh, so uh, five years ago, uh, Singtel was still a very traditional connectivity telco. And that's like, it was a, and I, and I was all about to say engineering focused because uh, uh, Google is engineering focused, but it's a different engineering. It's a, it's a services and software engineering, which is a, so it's a completely uh, different world. So, so this kind of uh, uh, lo long-term vision of, of a kind of a digital company and creating the culture towards that thing, because at that time telcos were quarter focused. So there was no, nothing beyond one year uh, coming up. Where, 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 where is it going? Uh, we, we are kind of moving jointly together to become a digital company. So it, it's, we decided that's what we're going to be because there's two options that you could become a utility company where you need to just focus on the network and you're damn good at it or you become a digital company and we chose the digital company. Okay, I would like to see what happens in five years. So Rajesh, last, last words from you. Where do you see the telco in five years time and what can they learn from their peers in other industries? Um, I think um, as my uh, co-panelists mentioned, it's a very tough question. But I guess there's an opportunity now um, to be agile, um, opportunity to make your systems lean, ride on that opportunity. So you never know who's the next, who finds that next Airbnb within the telco, right? And you know, when that opportunity comes across, everybody rides that wave. That's 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 my view on the topic. I mean, this is the opportunity to to maybe go lean, go agile, become like a proper tel proper digital company, so that you can launch products and services in days and try and fail fast and, and, and move on quickly and then someone would actually identify something that takes off. That's that's my view. Okay, so what so the question for Google, what can they learn from you basically? I mean, we have seen, as I mentioned earlier, we've seen many legacy organizations being disrupted, they have transformed and then they're by disrupted by folks like yourself as well. So what are the best practices practices you can you think that they can learn from you and where do you see telcos in five years time? Sure, and you know, first kind of uh, agree that it's a very difficult question <laughs> because we do not know where it goes. But I think, you know, in terms of best practices, um, definitely, you know, one is of course, Google attracts and retains the best talent. And I think, you know, it's more important than ever in, you know, the industry and the overall digital world that we live in today. And it makes a lot of difference. Uh, when when we think about you know the impact that the people you know when you put you know great minds together in a room and then you know let them do what they want and that's something that you know Google is known for and does very well. The second is of course the ecosystem play and I think uh, you know Google does look at its ecosystem and you know we work with a lot of companies which is often not seen but definitely when you think about the ads business there's a lot of players you know when you think about the programmatic ads and the way it is delivered. Same is the story with, you know, cloud where we work with a lot of, you know, new age companies and, and, and service providers there. And finally, I think, you know, in, in, you know, again, in terms of, you know, telco and how we think about, you know, the telco industry evolving. My personal belief is that I have been discussing with telcos for very long and now it has kind of hit the rock bottom. And I see a lot of telcos very serious about, you know, adopting agile cultures, you know, very open to, you know, experimenting. So I'm very hopeful that uh, this time, you know, it will be, uh, you know, different approach. And many of them are, you know, undergoing the transformation that we would want to see. Very often earlier, I think, you know, the conversations were like PR exercises where you talk about innovation, you set up a fancy innovation lab, and then you drive innovation. Now it's more about, you know, how do we change and transform, you know, culture, you know, and how do we transform the way we operate, create more engineering focus within than just, you know, kind of looking at, vendors or suppliers to you know offer technology and i think that's where you know if you see you know particularly the google's focus is around innovation and how it creates that culture of innovation and you would see a lot of examples where google has shut down products where you know they are not doing well and i think taking that call early on is a very important you know trade that google has uh, you know taken and built a culture around at the same time you know looking at initial trends and a good example is deepmind Deep mind, you know, AI company is now profitable. It turned profitable last year after 10 years, but it was cash flow, you know, it was generating cash flows. You know, it was about 600 billion pounds plus, if, if I remember it correctly. But you know, and you, 
you understand this is an industry which is growing so fast, so you want to remain invested and it turns profitable. And you have to pick up those early signs and invest in areas which are growing faster. And then, you know, kind of remove those areas or, you know, cut down investments early on in areas which are not growing so fast or the industry is not headed. So I think that's a very important differentiation. And Google does it very well besides some of the other areas that you know, I spoke about. So final words from Google, rock bottom. I think I caught that, <laughs> caught that phrase. So any questions from the floor before we close this panel? Okay, so, oh, there's one quick question. Oh, good question. Uh, a lot. Uh, you know, Google today has one of the, you know, does operate a lot of network and, you know, fiber network, subseas. So there's a lot we can learn from telcos. Uh, there is a lot of, as I said, you know, resilience that, you know, telco industry brings and standardization. And definitely, you know, we are partnering with a lot of telcos, you know, where we are not just, you know, telling them what to do, but it's more about, you know, co-creation and innovation where we can jointly innovate. There's also some balance of, I, I would say, you know, there is some rebalancing going on, particularly which I spoke about briefly. When you think about the first party data, and how data sovereignty, you know, concerns, you know, uh, are emerging in different markets. And we are working with a lot of telcos around that, you know, in terms of, because telcos have done, a, I would say, you know, tremendous job. We trust telcos. Globally, if you see, you know, I think, you know, a lot of people would agree that we trust telcos with our data, you know, with all the things that we do. And they have created a very safe, secure kind of, uh, you know, environment for us to trust and something that we carry with us, you know, everywhere we go. So I think, that's definitely something which, uh, which we do, you know, work with telcos and create around first party data and, you know, digital advertisements and how, you know, that trust and safety and resilience of service is created. All right, I have to end here. So thank you very much. And thank you for the panelists. Fascinating conversation. And we have one more presentation before we close the day. Thank you very much, guys and girls.